Hi, I'm Brent. We're in beautiful Stratford, Prince Edward Island, and I'm going to showcase a little bit about some of the things I do when I'm not thinking about hockey. And one of the most important things to me is my ham radio hobby. I do it uh, from home. I do ham radio stuff out on the road as well. We're located outside right now because shortly a satellite is going to go overhead, and I'm going to try to contact other amateur radio operators through that satellite. When it first appears in the sky, it'll have all of Canada in its footprint, and it'll pass to the southeast of us eventually, and it eventually will uh, allow us to contact, or hopefully contact, hams that can also see the satellite all down the eastern half of the United States. Every pass is different. There may be uh, different conditions on here today, but we'll see what happens. Ham radio is something I've been into since I was really a very young person. I started being interested in just listening to the radio in my early teens. I finally got my ham radio license in my 20s. And ever since, I've been enjoying various aspects of communicating with other ham radio operators around the world. We use voice, we use Morse code, we use computer data, and sometimes we use interesting modes like satellites or bouncing signals off the moon. And on occasion, what I've been able to do is bounce radio signals off of the northern lights during an aurora and talk to hams in the central part of North America. So it's a lot of fun to uh, play around with ham radio. It doesn't require an internet connection. You can get a signal out of your antenna that goes all the way to Australia, and, uh, or you can talk to South Africa, Russia, or just around town. Radio is not dependent upon technology other than what each radio operator has at hand, and then the antenna they have in their yard to uh, carry the signal through the air. So it's a great hobby, it's a lot of fun, it's been around for over a hundred years and I hope it'll be around for over a hundred more. The satellite that's coming over is called SO50. It's a fairly small satellite, it's only about the size of a garbage can, and it's several hundred miles up in space. It has a receiver and a transmitter in it, which operate at the same time. So when I send my signal up to the satellite with this antenna, it will receive and then retransmit my signal back down in real time. It doesn't store my voice and play it back later, it happens immediately. So in order for me to have the best chance of success, what I want to do is listen to the satellite while I'm transmitting to the satellite. The only way to do that efficiently in my world is to have two radios on the go. So that's what I have actually. I have one little radio that's attached directly to the boom of the antenna, and that'll be my listening radio. And then I have another radio ready to go, which is my transmitting radio. That way, with my headphones on, I can listen to the radio uh, coming, the radio signal coming from the satellite, and I can transmit my voice to the satellite at the same time. I'll be pointing my antenna into the sky and trying to angle it just right so that I have the best received and transmitted signal at the same time. Hopefully, if I can hear myself well, then other people that are listening to that particular satellite, uh, the SO50 satellite, will be able to hear me well as well. Uh, one thing I also do is I wear headphones so I can have uninterrupted and, and unobstructed listening to the satellite itself. So the headphones will go into the receiving radio. The transmitting radio has a microphone built into it, so I just pick up the radio and talk. Now, of course, when I'm doing that, I have one hand holding the antenna. I have another hand holding the radio. I have no hands left to take any notes. So to take notes, what I do is I wear a recorder around my neck and the recorder listens to everything I'm saying. So when I uh, do my satellite pass, uh, the recorder, I can play it back later and hear all the stations that I talk to. Then I enter those call signs, if I get a chance to talk to any, into my computer and upload that data to the internet, and so do they at their end, and then the, the, uh, the contact is confirmed in both directions. So the only way I can take notes while I'm operating is to leave this voice recorder on and speak into that just to take notes for myself uh, when the satellite is going over. So very soon the satellite will be here, and I'm going to uh, finish getting ready. Victor, Yankee 2, Hotel Foxtrot, trying an SO50, VY2HF, listening. Okay. Victor, Yankee 2, Hotel Foxtrot, SO50. <laughs> November, Juliet 7, Hotel. How you doing, Gabe? Victor, Yankee 2, Hotel Foxtrot, Fox November 86. VY2HF, Oscar X-ray, stroke NJ7H, Golf Papa 49. Thank you, Gabriel, for another Greenland contact, 7-3. Okay. 
Greenland. Hello. That's Gabe in Greenland. Gangbuster signal, Gabriel. Kilo Zero, Fox Fox Yankee, K0FFY, Fox November 86, over. Roger, thanks for Echo November 32, VY2HF. No, I didn't, John, but uh, you'll be the first to know when I get there, 7 3. VY2HF and Fox November 86. I'm filming this QSO for YouTube, by the way, uh, John, so if I, we get it up there, I'll send you the link. Okay, take care. Have fun in, uh, in Cleveland, 7 3, VY2HF, PEI. Nice. That'll do it. All right, so that was a pretty successful pass, I'd say. The first station I contacted was Gabe, November Juliet 7 Hotel, who's actually traveling in Greenland right now. I didn't know the satellite footprint was going to get that far east and that far north, but he was on the satellite, so he had a couple of quick exchanges. And then he worked a few other guys. I tried to call KI4RO, uh, but he didn't quite hear all of my call sign. He could hear a little bit. But then I worked John, K8YSE, and he's in Cleveland, Ohio. John and I have worked many times before, and we share a few jokes on the satellite when it's not too busy. And then there was another station I worked as well, a W0 station. So that would put him in the American Midwest. And I have to look him up when I get home. I'm not sure if I've worked that gentleman before or not. So all in all, a really, really good pass. And I'm pretty excited that uh, the system, is, as simple as it is, works so well on the satellite. All right, we're back in the shack, as I call it. And we're going to quickly show you the anatomy of the satellite pass that you just saw. The satellite itself, SO50, when we started to hear it in Stratford PEI, it was over northern Canada, over Nunavut, actually. And this circle here represents the part of the Earth that the satellite could see from its altitude. If we move this forward a little bit, minute by minute by minute, you'll see that the satellite passed almost directly overhead and then moved out over the Atlantic. So we had a really good view of the satellite, and the satellite had a really good view of eastern North America. During the uh, pass, I managed to work Gabe, NJ7H, up in Greenland, as I mentioned. I also worked John, K8YSE, in Cleveland, Ohio. And I worked another new station, uh, which was K0FFY. And that was Adam Whitney, and he's in Des Moines, Iowa. So we both communicated, each with only small radios, I'm sure, and the satellite did all the work by being up so high in space and having such a great view of both of us at the same time. So that's how the satellite contact worked. I got all the way to Des Moines, Iowa, with a little walkie-talkie that's normally made to work only in a small uh, radius of uh, just a few miles.